Hey guys, welcome back to Relentless. Today I have my special guests, Gary and Kim. <laughs> so we're gonna play two truths and a lie to get everybody comfortable before I start. You know. So you want to go first? I gotta go first. <laughs> <laughs> I have lived in five states. I have one college degree, and I have no pets. Why is it less than five states? Nope. What's the lie? That I have one college education. Oh. One college <laughs> education, one degree. <laughs> Clearly none. I have three pets, I have chickens, and I have, um, and I played soccer in college. Um, the lie is, you have three pets? I know you have chickens. <laughs> so, okay, I'm gonna go. Mine were good. <laughs> Um, I attended Pedro High School, I attended Perry Central High School, and I love Brussels sprouts. Girl, you don't like Brussels sprouts. Yes, I do. What? <laughs> what? You do? You oh, you didn't, go, you didn't go to Pedro High. You went to Perry Central. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> you had me. You had me on that one. <laughs> okay, we're going to get started with the question. Can you tell us about yourself? Start with Gary. Okay. Um, my name's Carrie. I'm an occupational therapist here at Southern Bone and Joint. I have been a therapist for about 10 or 11 years. I was an occupational therapy assistant before and then went back to get my degree to be an occupational therapist. Kim. My name's Kimberly Sterling. Um, I'm an OTA, occupational therapy assistant. Um, I went to Southern for my undergrad and then went to um, a school in New Orleans, and I'm from Louisiana. Um, please share your experience with people that you've seen with disabilities. Um, I would say that, I mean, obviously growing up going to, pedal, to public schools, I went to pedal your stomping grounds. Um, <laughs> but, I mean... <laughs> I, um, I mean, we, it's a public school, so we had kids with disabilities there, but then um, most of my experience, though, it's been an adult as an OT um, practicing and working with kids and adults with both physical and developmental delays. Similar to Carrie's, I um, have learned a lot through being an occupational therapy assistant. I um, used to work at a pizza clinic, and we saw people from, you know, a wide range of disabilities, um, but yeah. Have y'all ever experienced labeling or labeled somebody with a disability? Oh, no, that's a hard one. <coughs> I think, I think from my experience, it was, and I know this sounds kind of weird, but um, maybe the individual, because they're coming us, they're coming to us to, you know, get better and not get better, but maybe. Um, they have a goal in mind and our job is to help them reach that goal um, and I think you know maybe some self limitations we see that where you know our patient says I don't think I can do this because of my disability but really you know there's there you know sometimes they're just self limit themselves and we're there to kind of help them push them and get them to do what they want to do I think too with my experience with labeling is I'm a huge proponent for um, person first language and making sure that you identify the person instead of the disability. So <clears throat> I have ADHD, so but so if you if I was going to refer to myself, I wouldn't say the kid the ADHD kid. I would say the kid with ADHD <clears throat> because um, the disability doesn't define who you are. You are a person who happens to have said disability. What advice do you have for people that been through your experience or vice versa? 
I think that it's just to treat people like humans and everyone's the same regardless of disability or not and um, my experience would be to treat everyone the same. Same. I have the same answer. Treat everybody equal. Um, you know, and just be there for them if they need a hand, just like anybody else. You know, if anybody's going through anything, we're there for them. And um, I expect the same thing from the other person. Well, thank you, Carrie and Kim, for answering my questions. And thank you guys for watching. We'll see you soon.